In the last lecture, we learned about the basics of use effect react hook. Now, in this lecture, let's understand the use of use effect react hook with a more practical example. Here, I have created a demo react application. And in this application, we are displaying this login form. In this login form, you can enter any valid email and you can provide a password which is more than seven characters long. And when you click on this login button, it will take you to the home page. Now, in the home page, you can see that in the header, these menus are also displayed. Currently, these links won't do anything. But when you click on this logout button, it will take you back to the login screen. Now, to design this application, if I go to VS Code, here I'm in app component. In this app component, first we are displaying the header using this main header component. And then we are displaying either this login component or this home component based on the value of this is logged in property, this is logged in state. So if the value of this is logged in state is false, in that case we are displaying this login component. But if the value of this is logged in is true, in that case, we are displaying this home component. Now, where are we setting the value of this is logged in? We are setting the value of this is logged in within this login handler and this logout handler. So here we have created this is logged in state. And when the user clicks on the login button, this login handler function will be called. And there we are setting the value of this is logged in to true using this update is logged in state updating function. And when the user clicks on the logout button, there we are calling this logout handler. And there we are setting the value of this is logged into false using this state updating function. So let's now understand the use of this use effect hook using this demo application. Now, what could be the side effect here? Of course, we can send an HTTP request to the server, which can validate our email and password, which we specify using this login form. But at the moment, we don't have such server. Therefore, here, let's try another approach. At the moment, when we provide any valid email address and password, and when we click on this login button, we are taken to the home page. But when we reload the page here, we lose the login status and we are back to this login screen. And this is probably not something which we want. In reality, when you log in, the application sends a request to the backend and gets some login data, for example, some token which identifies that this user is authenticated. But of course, that's something which we can do when we have a backend. But here, we are not using any backend. Still, we want to keep track of the user logged in status. At the moment, we lose this status because in the app component where we are managing this is logged in state, this state is just managed as a React state. That means, this state is simply managed in some JavaScript variable behind the scenes by React. So by default, when we reload our application, our entire React script restarts and all variables are reset and their previous value is lost. That's how JavaScript works in browser. And this is nothing related to React specific. Now, since we lose data when this React application starts, it would be nice to store the previous data somewhere where it persists that data. And when we start the app again, we can check if the data was persisted. And if the data is there, we log the user automatically so that the user doesn't need to re-enter the details. And that's where we can use the use effect hook. So let's start with storing the data. Here, inside this login handler function, I'm setting this is logged in state to true. So I want to store this is logged in data in the browser storage. Now a browser has multiple storage. The most common storage for this use case would be either cookies or local storage. For our application, let's use local storage of the browser since it is easy to work with. Now, if I go to the browser and if I open developer tools, here, let's go to the application tab. And here you will see the local storage. So if I expand this local storage, here you can see this is our URL, the URL for this application. If I click here, currently there is no data stored in this storage. Here in this storage, the data is stored as a key value pair. And in this storage, we can store data programmatically using JavaScript. So let's see how to do that. 
let's go to visual studio and here inside this function i want to write a logic to store some data in the browser's local storage for that i can use this local storage object this object is a global object present in the browser and on this object i can call set item method now to this set item method we need to pass two arguments the first argument is going to be a string and this string is going to be an identifier okay so this string is going to be the key as i showed you here the data is stored as a key value pair so the first argument will be the key and the second argument will be the value so for the key let's say the key name is is logged in and for the value again we need to provide some string value now here we can either pass one for logged in and we can pass zero for not logged in okay or we can also pass some other string like logged in okay something like that just to keep it simple let's use one or zero so here i will set this is logged into one so here what will happen is whenever we will click on this login button first of all in the local storage this key will be created with this value one and then this is logged in will be set to true so let's go to browser here let's enter some valid email and a valid password so the valid password will be any password which is seven or more characters long now when i click on this login button you will notice that here a data has been created a key has been created so this key is is logged in and the value of this key is one so this data this data has been created using this code so this is how we can store data in browser's local storage so when this app restarts or re-renders, what we want is we want to check if in the local storage we have that key value pair. And if that key value is present in the local storage and if its value is 1, in that case, we automatically want to log in the user. For that, what we can do is first we need to read the value, right? So we can read the value using this local storage object and on this object we can call this get item method and to this method we need to pass the name of the key here we have specified the key name as is logged in so let's pass that and this method is going to return us the value of this is logged in so let's go ahead and let's store that value in a variable and now let's check if the value of this is logged in value variable if it is equal to 1 in that case we want to call this function and we want to update the value of this is logged into true so we can also do it like this but with this approach we have a huge disadvantage here this logic is going to create an infinite loop why because if you remember from our previous lectures we have learned that we should never update a state inside the component function directly we should always update the state inside an event handler function here what we are doing is we are trying to update the value of this is logged in state directly inside the component function and because of this it will create an infinite loop and this is where we can use the use effect react hook so let's go ahead and let's import the use effect react hook from the react library and let's go ahead and let's call this use effect function now in the last lecture we learned that this use effect function takes two parameters the first parameter is a callback function for that i'm going to use this arrow function syntax and the second argument is an array and this array is an array of dependencies for now i'm not going to pass anything here but for this callback function i am going to move this logic so i will cut it from here and i will move it inside this callback function so now this callback function that means this logic will only get executed for the first time when we are rendering the component this app component for the first time and also when the dependency changes here but for the dependency we have not passed anything so this logic here will only be executed for the first time 
when this app component will be rendered for the first time in the web page. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and let me reload the page. So you can see that since this is logged in is set here to one, even if I am refreshing the page, we are still in the home page. Now what I will do is I will delete it. So now this is logged in data is not present in the local storage. So now when I refresh the page, we will be redirected to this login screen. And now let me use an email ID and a password. And when I click on this login button, I'm back to this home page and this is logged in key is also created here in the local storage. So if I refresh the page, I will not be logged out. So it is not redirecting us to the login screen. So this is one use where we can use this use effect react hook. So this code, which we have written inside this callback function, this will be executed for the first time when this app component will be rendered for the first time. And also whenever the dependency which we specify within this array that changes. This function is not going to be called every time this state changes. Okay, this function will only get called whenever its dependency changes. All right, now let's also make sure that when the user clicks on the logout button, we also remove this key from the local storage. For that, inside this logout handler, let's again call this local storage object. And on that, let's call remove item. And to this remove item, we need to pass the key name. So here, the key name is, is logged in, all right? So now whenever we will click on the logout button, it will remove this key from the local storage. Let's see that. So when I click on this logout button, you can see that we are logged out and that key has also been removed from the local storage. So this is all from this lecture. I hope with this lecture, the use of use effect react hook is clear to you. Now here in this example, we have not set any dependencies for this use effect function. So you can see that this dependencies array is empty. In the next lecture, let's also understand how the dependencies for this use effect work and what happens when its value changes.